big business, I would say. And uh, the breaking news is that my friend, my buddy, Shane Gillis, making his return to Saturday Night Live. Have you seen that yet, Vin? Whoa, I did not know about this. He is hosting Saturday Night Live February 24th, which is kind of kind That's of cool real. that he, it's cool that he's getting the redemption. But can I tell you something? I worry about this and I don't think like so sh I only know Shane on a very surface. I essentially only know I've met him a couple times and I know his personality on air. So I don't know if he's really like this off air, but I feel like he's not a vindictive guy, which I wish he was in this situation. <laughs> Because I think the best way to handle this would be like, yeah, I'll host SNL and give you guys ratings for a week. The only sketches I will appear in will be written by me and John McKeever. Like, I wish he had that in him. I don't know that he does. But if it was just the Gillian Keeves guys taking over SNL, I think that that's the best format for him to be on. I worry about him walking into that version of SNL and having to kind of play by their rules and do their sketches, you know? It's got to be really hard. And I've talked to comedians. I don't know if I've talked to any comedians who've hosted SNL. I, I've talked to a lot of people who've worked on SNL. But it's got to be really hard to come from a comedy background like him, where you have a lot of street cred. Uh, people, your fans love you because you are who you are. He's a very authentic kind of a guy. And then having to, not only you get the chance to go back there to do this, but if they're going to make him play by their rules... It's not going to be as sweet for him as I think he thinks it will be. Right. That's that's what I'm saying, because like the 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 culture there, like look what they did to Chappelle and Elon Musk. When those guys hosted, they threatened walkouts and there's all sort of drama that week that like the writers won't show up or the cast is going to boycott or something. How this and guy runs a show like that. Everybody's got an opinion. Who is running like at Howard Stern show? Nobody's allowed to go do anything, but SNL, they could just run to the media and complain about the hosts that they have on all the time. It's I wonder how much Lauren, I wonder how much Lauren cares that that stuff is happening. Cause it seems like something that would not have flown back in the day. It probably wouldn't. But nowadays, like if somebody's talking about the show, he's probably happy. Um, well, so every time I've heard Shane in interviews, talk about Lauren Michaels, he talks about how good Lauren was to him. So again, I think Shane's going to go in there like, hey, we're all good. I'll do whatever you guys want. But that writing staff and that that cast doesn't have the same mentality. Like, Hack Ride, what is the headline that I sent you of uh, the article announcing that Shane Gillis is on SNL? Oh, uh, yes, it's on screen now. It says Shane Gillis to host SNL after being fired in 2019 for racial and homophobic slurs. Like, I don't, first of all, was he fired for anything homophobic i don't remember that oh well, they just throw things in now <laughs> wasn't and he, he was, was also sexist <laughs> they're craigersing him <laughs> they just throw shit in yeah i don't remember any homophobia i mean he's he calls stuff gay all the oh you know what he called um he called judd apatow or was it chris gethard he called them gayer than isis or something no homophobe i i don't know if that makes you homophobic <laughs> He's ISIS ISIS is so, gay. They're so gay. They're so gay. There's no women over there. What do you think they're doing with their puds? It's a good burn, though. But, but like, already that's starting, even with the announcement where they're like, Aunt, don't forget he's homophobic because he says gay sometimes. Remember, guys? So I think that horse shit is starting, and it's just going to, like, I can't imagine. Like, I think the, the sketches he's done as Trump are how SNL should have handled Trump from the beginning. Okay. Like they they make him it makes him into a, a caricature, like a goofy guy. It makes him silly rather than like this demon that's attacking us. Hey, so it, it 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 takes the seriousness out of Trump, which is funny. If they have him play Trump on SNL, I can't imagine that writing staff capturing his voice. Now, the one thing is like he's friends with Michael Che. Right. So maybe just Che will kind of take over that week. <laughs> But other than that, I don't really trust anyone writing for Gillis's voice. You're right, though. He should have had this conversation before he accepted. At some level, they must have. I think he, he, yeah, he, he very well may have. Because like I, that's the other thing is like I can't see him telling Lauren Michaels like this is how I'm doing it. But I also can't see him saying like, hey, I'll just do whatever cornball sketches you guys write. Like, I think he knows that would be kind of bad for who he is because the other thing he did this week 
uh, was signed a big deal with that. The other time they used uh, racist and homophobic in a headline was when they announced his deal with uh, Bud Light. So he's like, he's the right. face of Bud Light now, which is very fitting as well. They're trying to even out that boat, aren't they? They <laughs> really are. Guys, guys, what if we have Shane Gillis? Will you yeah. forget about Dylan Mulvaney, please? Yeah. We threw Shane <laughs> Gillis in the port and we got uh, Dylan Mulvaney riding on the uh, starboard. I don't know. But I, I got to say, it's, it's pretty awesome that SNL, because it, what a great place for the final battle for the great woke comedy debate. Oh, Lauren Michaels wins again. Think about it. Like, he has his hard left staff and he's bringing on, a, well, you know, the conservative comedian, I guess. He gets, he gets which, to have which both worlds. Which he's worlds. not. He's, mis- he's mislabeled as that. But. You didn't see my air quotes. He, he yeah. blind. You don't see him. But yes. Yeah. It, so I think, it, I think it actually does SNL a great service for this, like, moment in history we're at with this you know, woke trying to stop comedy and these people trying to keep it alive. Let's have the battle right there, man. That's where it kind of all started. Amen. Yeah. Well, and I do, I guess this is Lauren Michaels admitting that, that, that he was wrong to get rid of Gillis. But I do think it would have been such a, like, fuck you to everything that was going on at that time if they were like, hey, we believe in the kid. Like, these comments might be bad and might not represent what we do, but we still find him funny and we like we think he's a talented guy that'll make this show better because lauren michaels seems to believe that obviously the <laughs> they wouldn't have point, him on otherwise uh, snl back in the day used to invite controversy like this is going back to yes. their old form this is going yes. back to like 70s 80s style snl which i mean here's what happened okay most comedians most people that i know are very live and let live kind of people they don't care about people's personal lives. They make jokes about everything. Right. Uh, there's nothing that they're too serious. So when the left comes in and says, hey, get off the bla- the the back of trans people, get off the back of gay people, get off the back of this, that, and that, they generally get behind them and say, yeah, okay, that's good. But then when they started coming for you know the jokes about every little thing, comedians really were you know caught off their guard and have been pushed back really far. So things are slowly starting to change back to the way they used to be. And this is a good sign of that. In fact, um, there was a dude from Barstool. What's his name? Will Sasquatch? Mike, did I ever tell (laughs) you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Sasquatch came through the club, and the guy who was supposed to open for him wasn't there, and they said, Vin, could you go up and do some time? And I was like, I don't want to. These are like (laughs) 21-year-olds. I don't want to fucking go and do this show. They don't want me there. And... I talked to sat little sass in the back and he goes, no dude, just do the dirtiest stuff. You know, they'll love it. Yeah. And I went out there in front of a room of 21 year olds and did every fucking awful, horrific joke that I could. And they loved it. And I went, Oh, this is where we are. Everybody is dead wrong about this new young crowd. So I guess my point is long and long and tall of it. That's where the money is now. Yeah. Well, so they um, need Shane Gillis. They need those eyes back on what they're doing. Kirk has talked about this on KMS. Like when Trump comes up, he always says like, it's not the the reaction to Trump this time won't be the same because he talks about his kids saying like the the kids now that are in high school and maybe even like early college, like they, they look at Trump as like a funny TikTok character. (laughs) Like they think he's a goofball. So it's, I don't think it's going to be the same drastic reaction in the fall when like Trump gets reelected. There will be a segment of that, but I think we'll be able to laugh at that stuff a little more. I hope, like, I hope I'm not wrong that we revert back to where we were eight years ago, but it does seem a little bit now, like people are more open to, um, well, I mean, like Shane Gillis is one of the biggest comics in the world, that brand of comedy, you know, but the, the pendulum is swinging back, man, in the mainstream. eye, I'm telling yeah. you the more conservative comics people are noticing like Gutfeld does better than the tonight one, show. Yeah. Yeah, it does better than all these other late night shows. And they're putting on people like Florentine. They're putting on Jamie Lasau and like people Norton that goes on there. DeRosa, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lots of people that aren't going to be courted by any of these other shows. So yeah. they're starting to realize that's where the eyes are going and it's going to start swinging. So that's what I think is going on.